Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about how do we construct the confidence interval for P uh, when we're looking at the parameters and the statistics in a given set of data and how, how do we actually go about making this confidence interval. So here we go. The first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that our data fits the criteria so that we can assume some things about it. So here are some of the conditions and when we assume these conditions these are going to be the tests that we've been working on for quite a while. Um, conditions. So with our conditions here, our first one is, is it random? So is the sample itself random? Was it a sample random or not? Right, so if we pick out Hershey's Kisses or, or Skittles or we're doing beads from a big bag, whatever it happens to be, did we find this sample in a random way? Okay, so if it is, then it meets that condition. Second thing is, does it meet the 10% condition? Okay, does it meet the 10% condition? Is my number less than one-tenth of the whole population? Because then that allows us to make certain assumptions about the data, it allows us to find certain things about um, what is what is possible? Uh, that's our that's our large counts condition. Number three, third piece uh, is is it normal? And this is that large counts condition. Large counts condition, right? So uh, is our number times our p hat greater than or equal to ten? and is our number times our one minus p hat, uh, is that greater than or equal to 10, right? So when that, when that happens, that allows us to assume certain things uh, about finding standard deviation and finding whether it's normal, and, and that allows us to do these calculations. So there's a, there's a notion here. So we test those three things. Let's say that all of them are true. That's my best straight line right there. You like that? <clears throat> Let's say that all three of those things are true. So then we can talk about critical values, and critical values basically look like this. Let me let me show you kind of uh, what we're looking at here. When we construct a, an interval, right? So let's just say for a second that we find these three conditions and we have a normal curve, and we want a ninety, let's say a ninety-eight percent uh, confidence interval, right? Well, what that would mean is if we know the if we know our mean here, right, that's going to mean that we have 49%, uh, you know, 49% of our data falls on either, either side of this, right? Well, our confidence interval and our critical values are going to help us find what z-scores actually correlate to those values. So if, for example, I have a, um, uh, let's say, a 90% confidence interval. Let me show you how this works. So if this was 90%, what that would mean is uh, I have a Z, and we're going to call this Z star because we're trying to remember these. the Z star does not have to do with actual data values. This has to do with the confidence interval. Our Z star has a certain amount. So Z star is the uh, value at which I have to put my interval to get a 90% confidence interval. Well, if you think about it like this, um, let's just say for a second here that I'll, I'll draw it up on my other one here. A 90% confidence interval uh, would look like this, right? So I'd have, you know, here and here. And that would mean that in this area here, this green, this would be 90% of data. Okay? Which would mean on either side, I have between, and I'm going to, I guess I'll do it in blue between this area here, right? And this area here, everything left, it's equal to 0.1 or 10% of data. And because it's symmetrical, on either side, I really have 0.05 and 0.05. Where did I get that? 90% confidence interval, right? 90% in the middle, 45 on either side. 
I take the leftover, which is the 10%, and I divide it by two because it's symmetrical. I've got these chunks here. Well, really, it's a z-score where the area under it is equal to 0.05. I want you to look at this, this chart here. So here's what I'm looking at. This is table A, right? So I've got a line here, and I know that the shaded area is 0.05. Well, when the shaded area is 0.05, what that means is I've got to find on this chart, I'm using it backwards, I've got to find on this chart where the area is equal to 0.05. And so I'm looking, check it out. So I'm looking here and I've got 0.05, uh, let's see, here it is. Here's 0.505 and 0.495. So my data value actually falls in between here. So what's my z-score there? Negative 1.604, so 1.64 and 1.65. So for a 90% z-score, it's between 1.64 and 1.65. So what we're going to say is it's 1.645, okay? Because that tail has an area of 0.05. That area is here. This is me reviewing again, right? So 0.05 is my area. So it's between these two values. And so it's going to be between the values of 1.64 and 1.65. Well, Mr. Sarris, that was negative. Remember, it's symmetrical on either side. So a Z-star score of 1.645, well, what does this mean? We're actually going to use the Z-star value to construct my confidence interval on either side. So maybe that didn't make sense. Let's do another one for 95. What if I have a 95% confidence interval? What's my Z-star? Well, my Z-star value for this one would be based on 95%. So I'd have 0.05 left, so 0.025 on either side. So I'm going to go to my chart here. Let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, here we go. So I need 0 0.025. Let's see, 0 0.025. Uh, oh, here's 0 0.026. Here's 0 0.025. Oh, look at this. 0 0.025. Look at that. So negative 1.9. Where'd it go? Negative 1.9. Six because I've got 0 0.025 here and it goes negative 1.96. So my Z star score here would be uh, 1.960. So let's say I wanted to construct a confidence interval that was 99%, like a 99% confidence interval. So in many, many 99% conf confidence intervals, my true proportion is going to fall in there 99 percent of the time so let's take a look here so if it's 99 percent 99 percent in the middle the two outsides are going to be one percent together right so 99 percent. so i have one percent left over but it's evenly split on either side so that'll be 0 0.005 right so 0 0.005 would be uh what's left over there so i'm going to go to find where the area is 0 0.005 and I see it somewhere between these two values here, right? So that's negative 2.575, mm, 2.575, uh, 2.575. So my Z-star here is 2.575. And that's going to give me where the area under the curve is half of the remaining percent. So in, in general... To find any percent. So I could have a 64% confidence interval. Uh, I'm going to use inverse norm. Because really that's what I was doing on the table, right? Inverse norm of the tail percent. The tail percent meaning what's like that piece over here, right? So that one I just was 0 0.005. That was for this one. And really it's inverse norm. of one minus whatever my percent is as a decimal divided by two because 99%, 1% left over, but it's two pieces. So the inverse norm of one of the pieces is gonna give me that uh, Z, Z star. So how do we use Z star? Why do we wanna use Z star? Well, if you think about it, to construct that confidence interval, if I've got the mean right here in the middle, yeah? So there's the mean. If I go Z score, the, that given Z score above, and that given z-score below, that's going to be my confidence interval. So, the confidence interval.
for P looks like this. It's my point estimate, right? Plus or minus, right? So that whatever my guess is, plus or minus my margin of error. Margin of error. Well, that's going to be my P hat plus or minus my Z star times the standard deviation. One plus P hat over it should be minus P hat. Let me rewrite this. And why is it my standard deviation? Well, your z-score is a certain number of standard deviations, right? So 1 minus p hat over n. And this right here is called my standard error. But Mr. Sayers, I thought that was I thought that was standard deviation. Well, we're calculating error here. So my standard error is based on what my point, uh, sorry, what my uh, proportion is, and the fact of them, them taking into account how many things I've done, like my n, how many how many things are in the sample. Okay, so why so why the z star? Well, if you think about it like this, a ninety five percent confidence interval, um, ninety five percent of data values fall within two standard deviations of the mean. Well, look here, this is one point nine six. It's a more exact way to say. This is how I go out from the middle. So I'm going to take my standard error and I'm going to multiply it by a number that gives me a certain percentage value on either side. Let's look at an example that can help. So Sleep Awareness Week begins in the spring with the release of the National Sleep Foundation's annual poll of U.S. sleep habits and ends with the beginning of daylight savings time when most people lose that hour of sleep. In the foundation's random sample of 1,029 U.S. adults, 48% said that they always or often got enough sleep in the last seven nights. So, identify the parameter of interest. The parameter of interest is P, and P is equal to what? What are we measuring? It's the proportion of U.S. adults who often... or always got enough sleep during the last seven days. Okay, check if the conditions for constructing a confidence interval for P are met. So here we go. Is this a random sample? Random sample. Yes, one. So they said it was random. Random So check. Uh, number two. Is my 10% condition met? Is 1029 less than one-tenth of all U.S. adults? Yes, it is. Uh, is it normal for large counts? So normal So let's see, is 1029 times 0.48 greater than 10? Yes, is 1029 times the Complement to that, 0.52, greater than 10. Yes. So my conditions are met. So what does this mean? Well, this means that I have uh, the ability to make this, construct this um, confidence interval around here. So find the critical value for 0.98 confidence interval. So my tail proportion So think about it like this. My tail proportion. Normal curve. Here we go. I have 98%. So that would mean there's 1% over here and 1% over here. So my tail proportion is 1 minus 0.98 over 2. 
which is equal to 0 0.1, 0 0.01, if you're thinking, and you would be correct. And so I'm going to do inverse normal. of 0 0.01. And what that's going to give me is the Z star. That's going to give me the Z score for which the data value is 0 0.01. And I get that. That's equal to Z star, which is equal to 2.326. And so to calculate the interval, P hat, plus or minus. Z star times the square root of P hat one minus P hat over my number, which is N. So what's my guess? My guess, my point estimate is 0.48 because that's what was given in there. So because we've met that 10% condition, my proposed um, critical, or sorry, my proposed point estimate matches my original. I've got plus or minus, and I've got 2.326 times, and this is my standard error, right? So it's 0 0.48 times 0.52 over 1029, and it's gonna be equal to 0 0.48 plus or minus 0 0.036, which is equal to 0.444 comma 0.516. So what does this mean? Interpret the interval in, con in context. We are 98% confident that, because that's 98% confidence interval, right? The interval from 0 0.444, 2.516 captures the true proportion of U.S. adults who report that they often or always got enough sleep in the last seven days. Got enough sleep slept in the last seven days. Okay, that's exactly how this works. So what was the skill that we learned here today? We learned what Z star is, and Z star is the Z score at which the area under the curve gives us our confidence interval that we want, whether it's 95, 90, 98, no matter what it happens to be, okay? So that was the skill that we just learned right here. So what are we, what are we gonna do now? Well, our next thing is, we are gonna learn a four-step process for constructing these intervals and when we use them and how, to, how exactly to go about using a situation where we're going to have this confidence interval uh, that's laid out. So here's the four step process. Okay, four step process. State. Parameter. And percent level. Okay, plan. And then, so we're saying, um, my parameter is the, like we just said, the proportion of US adults who reported um, always or often or always got enough sleep in the last days. We are, and we want the 98% confidence level. Uh, name of procedure, so plan the name of procedure. And conditions. Can we actually do this? Test the conditions. Then we're gonna do 
general and specific formulas. Right, do you have the formula listed out? Then do you fill it in? And we're gonna plug in numbers. Find the interval. Then we're gonna interpret by con and conclude by interpreting. Interpret in context, text. Right, go something like this. We are 95% confident. Right, so what are the formulas that we need here? Let's lay them out one more time. So, We're going to talk about choosing sample size. So our margin of error is based on a formula that we just looked at. So Z star times P hat 1 minus P hat over N. We want to solve for N. Right? So here's the deal. Sometimes you're going to have this Z score. You're going to have your parameter uh, and you're going to have to solve for N. And so what does N actually represent? Well, if we're looking for a sample size, a given sample size, um, we're dealing with people or number of applicants or, you know, we're looking at something that needs to be rounded up. Why do we have to round up? Well, we're, we're we can't have a portion of a sample, right? You can have a portion of a portion of a one thing, a portion of an M&M &M that you looked at, whatever it is. Uh, and so we're always going to round up. Okay, so whether it's people that uh, U.S. adults that you asked, well, you you would want 128.1,028.5 adults. You have 1,029 adults, um, and what we're going to do is we can solve for the number of n, or if if p hat is unknown, p hat is unknown, we're going to use p is equal to 0 0.5. So think about that. That means like 50%, right? So 50% uh, because that's conservative. Okay, so let's look at an example. A company has received complaints about its customer service. The managers intend to hire a consultant to carry out a survey of its customers. Before contracting the consultant, the company president wants some idea of the sample size that she will be required to pay for. you got to pay people for their, for their time to do these surveys, perhaps. Uh, one value of interest is the proportion P of customers who are satisfied with the company's customer service. She decides that she wants the estimate to be within three percentage points, 0 0.03, at a 95% confidence interval. So using a conservative estimate for P, how large of a sample size is needed? So we need to figure out how can we get a 95% confidence interval of around three percentage points. So our P at is 0 0.3, 0 0.03, and our Z star, right? Our Z star for 95% confidence intervals we just talked about was uh, 1.96. And we'll have 0.5 here because we're doing a conservative estimate. And we're going to have this over N. Well, if we um, do, we divide 0 0.03 by 1.96, then we square it, uh, then we do some solving here. We're going to get that N is equal to 1.067.11 people. Well, we can't have 0.11 people, so we're going to round up. We're going to have 1068 people. So that's the sample size we need to be within three percentage points at a 95% confidence interval. So what are they trying to do with this? In the company's prior year survey, 80% of the customers surveyed said they were satisfied. Using this value as a guess for p hat, find the sample size needed for a margin of error at most three percentage points with a 95% confidence interval. So what we're saying is we're not doing a conservative estimate. We actually have something to compare it to. We're going to compare it to last year's results. So we're going to set up 0.03 is equal to 1.96. And that's for a 95% confidence interval, right? Instead of 0.5, which was a conservative estimate, we're going to say we know our 
value from last year. And we're going to figure out what would it take for 80%. Well, we are going to take, uh, again, divide by 1.96, square it, multiply by n, divide by uh, 0 0.8 times 0 0.2. We actually need uh, n is equal to 682.95, which rounds to 683 people. Okay. So what if the company president demands a 99% confidence interval instead of a 95% confidence interval? Would this require a smaller or larger sample size? Assuming everything else remains the same. So compared to number two, let's say, for example, instead of a three, per, inst so we have three percentage, but instead of a 95, we've got a 99. So it'd be 2.576, again, 0 0.80 times 0 0.20 over n. What we'd end up with is after we solve that is we'd have n is equal to 1179.7, which would round to 1180 people. But think about that for a second. Why would we need more people to establish a larger confidence interval? What do you think? Well, if you think about it, it makes sense because if we want to encompass a lot, be more confident, Incumbents a larger area, we've got to ask more people. Um, larger sample will make interval larger. Because we we will have more positive feedback. Okay, that's all those to it, guys. So the notion from this section is how do we construct this confidence interval using Z scores? And it really has to do with that tail percentage. That tail percentage really tells us where does our Z score have to be to establish an interval to give us an idea of what values give us um, our best chance of capturing that true mean or that true proportion. Okay. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.